So one thing we all have in common in this room is that we want to develop renewable ener energies in the world. One thing that is holding us back from this is uh, the available space. We're lacking space to install PV plants. And so one solution that has been looked into is to build solar plants on uh, water areas. A group of scientists has examined um, a database of uh, water reservoirs available in the world, and they saw that, um, that, they saw that uh, there was uh, a lot of potential in the world to install uh, PV plants on water areas. Um, worldwide, they estimated that there are 9,269 terawatt hours uh, per year that could be produced if we covered 30% of all the water reservoirs available in the world. And this is um, close to 4.2 billion people uh, mid uh, an average consumption. So what Urba Solar did is uh, that, they, that we looked into uh, building solar plants on uh, water areas. This is what we did, we started doing a few years ago. And uh, I'm very sh proud to show you this uh, picture of uh, the first solar PV plant that we, the solar, first, sorry, uh, solar floating plant that we installed uh, in the south of, of France. Um, it was commissioned in February 2022, and it has a capacity of 5 megawatts. So if we take a closer look, to this uh, uh, solar, uh, this floating PV plant, uh, you can see the, all the different component, components that interact uh, on a PV plant. Uh, the PV modules uh, that collect the power, um, the floating, uh, uh, float, the floaters on which uh, all the structure and the, the modules are installed the cables, and uh, here what you can also see are the inver inverters, the things that are um, uh, coming out of the way. And um, so this is uh, something that we, we are very proud to have uh, built, and it wasn't an easy task. We met a lot of challenges, uh, but we still, went, uh, we still went through with it and uh, made it a success. And indeed, we met many challenges because Something that we learned uh, when we were children, the first, one of the first things we learned at home is that you must absolutely not uh, mix energy, electricity with water. And here we were deciding that we were going to build a whole PV plant on water. Um, so that was not an easy task. We had to think a lot at, uh, about a lot of things, how to mix uh, the cables, cables circulate, how to isolate the system, the electric system from the water. Um, so a lot of questions that had to be uh, solved. Another challenge with building a solar plant on uh, water is the impact of water on uh, all the components. Um, depending on what uh, the water contains, the different components, uh, it can have uh, an impact on, uh, on the, the structure, the floaters, so we had to be very careful in uh, what, ele what equipments we chose, uh, which ones we were going to install on the, on the solar plant, and uh, make sure that they were going to be resistant to water even more resistant than uh, what we already use on the uh, uh, ground-mounted uh, plants. Another challenge um, that we weren't used to meet um, is that our expertise at Urba Solar is to build uh, PV plants on the ground, on greenhouses, on carports, on uh, areas that, are, um, that don't move and that uh, are... Uh, uh, that have a predictable uh, behavior. Um, and so here we were going to build this uh, PV plant on water. So even if uh, the first uh, PV plant, uh, the, solar, the solar plant that we installed on water wasn't uh, going to be built in the sea, it was uh, built on fresh water, there would still be some movement of the water uh, with the waves because of the wind. 
And so we had to be careful. Uh, we had to find ways of um, anchoring the whole system, making sure that it would uh, that all the components would resist the movement, that they wouldn't be uh, the movement of the water, uh, that they wouldn't be impacted. So this is something we had to be we had to think about to find innovative ways of dealing with. And uh, last but not least, um, it was the first time that we were going to build something on water. So yes, there is all the, the aspects of uh, how the equipments are going to resist to water, but there is also the aspect of uh, the construction. How do we build something on water? How, what is uh, the, the protocol? Uh, it was the first time we were doing this, so how, were, how we had to think of what uh, protocol we were going to put into place um, to build it. And so uh, this is uh, my favorite dish. Uh, it's ratatouille for those who know it. It's a French, uh, it's a French dish with uh, summer vegetables. And um, it's, uh, my favorite one is the one made by my dad, uh, his recipe. And uh, I've tried to make it a lot of times myself before succeeding in making it as good as my dad does it. And this is something you cannot do with a PV plant. You cannot build it a hundred times until you succeed. You have only one shot because it's something that is very expensive, that uses manpower, that takes time. So we had to find a way of making it a success the first time, at the first try. Uh, so what we did is we put into place an experimental approach. We said, okay, we cannot build, uh, um, we cannot, uh, build it a uh, hundred times, but we can start by making a small prototype before building it at large scale. And this way we could identify all the, the risks that we would meet or all the, yeah, see how it works. Uh, okay, does this work? Does this not work? And, and identify uh, how to do it before having to do it at large scale. So what we did is we, we had a team of Urba Solar who went on site uh, with a prototype, with all the floaters, uh, with some uh, PV modules, with the structure, and uh, they built it on site to see how everything, uh, if, if all the components uh, worked right together, uh, if it was easy to assemble or not, uh, if, uh, okay, this bolt uh, works well or not, all these details that when you anticipate them, when you see at small scale how they work, it, you save a lot of time uh, when you want to build uh, the plant uh, on large scale. So by doing this, they also uh, solved how, uh, to, how to build the plant on, the, on water. What they did actually was to, they saw that uh, a good solution was to build it on the ground and then to make it uh, gently uh, uh, go down in the water, thanks to the gentle slope of the, of the, the area near the, the lake. Another thing that we put into place uh, in, in this experimental approach, uh, so this was, done to, is, um, this was done to see the impact of the water on the PV modules. So what we did is that we worked with a company called SunCycle, who are PV uh, experts, and they have this mobile laboratory where they can take pictures of the PV modules. So more specifically, it's called um, electroluminescent uh, imaging. And this makes it possible to detect all the micro cracks that there are in the PV module. And so what we did is that they, they came with their laboratory on site, they took pictures of the modules, then we, we installed the modules on the structure. We made it move as if uh, it was uh, moved by the water. And then we took off the PV modules and we took pictures again. And this way, we could compare uh, the initial images with the final images. And this way, we could see if uh, the structure was strong enough to protect the PV modules, which are uh, the PV modules in a power plant, in a PV power plant, are the um, most fra fragile equipments. Um, so it was a way of seeing if the structure could protect the most fra fragile elements in the PV plant, and it worked. And we saw that it was strong enough. And this way we were reassured uh, that we could build this uh, large-scale uh, PV plant. 
And so uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, the day where they built the plant uh, and how they so assembled uh, the whole system uh, large scale and then uh, made it slide uh, in, uh, in the water. And so in the context of this uh, experimental approach, what we're also putting into place um, is uh, installing a whole uh, sensor network all around the PV plant uh, while it's in uh, operation. So these uh, sensors are going to be, are starting to be installed today and tomorrow and uh, next week. Um, so it's uh, the result of a partnership with uh, Inosi, uh, which are PV experts and who have helped us uh, work in, the, in a PV R&D program, which is uh, Trust PV. And so what we did, what we did is to plan this installation of uh, many different sensors all around the plant. So what you see is a, a map from uh, the, the site and all the lines that you see going away from the, the, the PV structure are the anchoring lines. Uh, so this is how we, we fix uh, the structure uh, on the lake is that uh, it's anchored uh, to the ground. This way we're sure it doesn't move. And so um, we're installing uh, load sensors all around the plant on the anchoring lines to see if there are movements uh, or of tracking from one side or the other. Uh, we put uh, wind sensors to see uh, how uh, the structure uh, uh, behaves uh, compared to the wind that it, it, uh, is, um, uh, that it has around it. Uh, also irradiance level uh, sensors um, and inclinometers so that this is a sensor that makes it possible to um, monitor how the structure uh, moves with the waves so this way we cross all this data that we collect and uh, we can see uh, how the, the plan behaves it will also uh, help us um, understand uh, the environment and learn from all this data and uh, improve for the next uh, uh, solar uh, floating plants that we will build, uh, uh, how, to, how to maybe uh, have a better uh, reaction to the environment or things like that. And so today we have four plants, uh, four floating plants in operation and one that is being built. So we're very proud of that and much more to come. And uh, it's only the beginning. <laughs>